Good morning, everyone. Well, this is a first for our church and for many other churches. But as I said in the email that we sent out to the Eaglemont family yesterday, and if you happen to uh, be watching this and, and you didn't get that email, uh, please let us know. We want to include you in that. Uh, also, a few have said that uh, their church emails have gone to their spam or junk folders, so check there as well if you're not getting it in your inbox. Children's Ministry sent out uh, email and resources to uh, families with children, so be sure you, if you don't see it, check your spam and junk mail. Otherwise, contact us and we'll uh, be sure to include you. As I mentioned yesterday in that email, this decision to not gather in person was not a fear-based decision. It was a decision that was made out of a genuine heart of love and care for people, an expression really of consideration for those in our church community and in our broader community. We're well aware that the risk is quite low still here in Alberta, but we also as a church wanted to do our part, of course, together with other community organizations to flatten the curve, as is the term, on the spread of this virus. We care as well that people in our city of Beaumont and region always, uh, for them to undoubtedly know that we as a church genuinely care about them. That's been our heart and desire as a church from the very beginning of when this church started over 13 years ago. And that certainly influenced our decision to not meet together today in person. Uh, we know the decision to suspend the gathering today uh, was short notice. We obviously wrestled with it up until late afternoon when we sent the email. But you know it's been a very dynamic situation. I want to address, before Pastor Brennan comes to share the message this morning, I want to address the issue of fear. We see it gripping many people, even Christ followers. And of course, as Christians, we're not immune to fear creeping in at various times in our lives and sometimes even feeling like it's taking over our hearts and minds. And that's not the way or the way, well, the way that Jesus would have it for us or wants it for us. Some of you may need God's peace deposited into your hearts today. And I, I'm, I'm believing that that will happen as we pray together in a moment. And it'll happen today and it'll be a prayer that you'll have to look to God for tomorrow. And, and he can take your anxiety and give you his peace in place of that. And that's a beautiful and powerful thing. In our reading through the Bible together, through the Bible in a year as a church family as we're doing, two days ago in, in Friday morning's reading from Psalm 120, the very first verse of Psalm 120 said, I read it and many of you did as well, in my distress I called to the Lord and he answered me. Have you felt distressed these days? It's probably quite normal understandable to, to a point. As Christ followers, fear is not something that should dominate our minds, though. What do you do with fear? What do you do with that distress that you feel? Do you call on the Lord, as Psalm 120 said, or, or do you go buy more toilet paper? That's happened, as we've seen in the news. Well, calling on the Lord simply means talking to Him admitting that you're fearful and surrendering that to him and receiving his gift of peace in the midst of the storm that can sometimes be a moment-by-moment -moment thing throughout some days. But don't give up on doing that. There are many more things I could say about this, but I mostly want you to hear God's words. Three passages that I want you to take note of and maybe write down the references so that you can read and reread them in the coming week. Jesus' words from Matthew 6, 25 to 34 are all about worrying. Starting in verse 32, Jesus says, For your heavenly Father knows that you need all things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, Jesus says simply, do not worry. 
There it is. It's actually a command of Jesus to not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has enough worries on its own. And then 2 Timothy 1.7, a powerful verse from the Apostle Paul. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I encourage you to by faith receive that from God today. And the verse I sent in my email uh, this past Thursday from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication is just a a, a petitioning, a calling out uh, uh, to God, as Psalm 120 referred to. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And maybe your simple request is, God, I need your peace. Verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. We sometimes, we can't comprehend it. It's that powerful. We'll guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I'm going to pray in a moment, and I want you to join me in praying for God's peace in your heart and for God's peace to be in the heart of your neighbors and people you know. Yes, of course, be wise, but I encourage you to open your heart to God's gift of peace and and, and be a testimony, Christian friend. Be a testimony uh, to the people who know you're a Christ follower and who are Watching your life, I believe, and and watching how you respond at a time like this. We can also still be a testimony of the love and care of Jesus for one another uh, during this time. People, reach out to one another. Please, reach out to one another in the church family. If someone comes to mind, believe that that God put them on your mind and message them. Let them know you're thinking of them and praying for them. Maybe it's a time in this season to use the old-fashioned phone and pick up the phone and call somebody who might be on their own, in their home, staying away from interaction, and they, they just hear from you a word of encouragement. So let God lead you in those type of Christ-like activities. There are a few people in our church who have traveled and returned home and will be, you know, self-isolating. A man in our church a couple of days ago talked to me about this, and it's the case for them. And and he he said this is a time that him and his wife are, are viewing as a time of reconnection. So there's some beautiful and cool things that can actually come out of the circumstances we're in. And Pastor Joel, as we mentioned in the email yesterday, is spearheading and has offered to step in to coordinate uh, where needed uh, the, the interaction, the, the loving gestures between you as a church family, and if, if, if you have a need, if you're, uh, you know, in a vulnerable situation and you're, you're uh, in your home and staying there and you need groceries, as an example, uh, and you don't know who to call, uh, Pastor Joel has offered to, to be available to uh, do what we can as a church to make these needs known, uh, or if you're available to help and serve, let Pastor Joel know, joel at eaglemontchurch.ca. So again, as Christ followers, we, we don't walk in fear, instead prayerfully ponder some of the scripture verses that, I, that I've shared with you. So let's pray now, and where you are, please join me. If you're alone, join me. If you're together with your family right now, or, you're, or just your spouse, or friends maybe, um, take time. To, to join your hearts together in the, the, the circle that you sit in as I pray and, and, and pray along with me. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can know that you are God, creator, all-powerful, all-wise, all-loving. And so we lean on you always and especially at times like this, when there's things that we don't understand, when there's things that could bring fear to our heart, Lord, we surrender that fear and we receive your gift of peace. And I pray that everyone listening to to my voice right now, not that it's about this wording or my voice or this prayer, it's about the Spirit of God working right now in hearts that are open to you. And I pray that everyone in the Eaglemont family would know the peace of God. And I pray that everyone in our Beaumont community and region and province would know the peace of God across our nation, around the world. And God, you'd give wisdom to the medical people and the politicians. They may not recognize it as your wisdom, but we pray for God's wisdom to be flowing through their lives in this time. Lord, we pray that the testimony of Jesus would be strong through our lives as Christ followers as is always our desire, but 
again, especially at a time like this, may the love and grace of Jesus and our faith and trust in him be strong. In this time we pray, in Jesus' name, amen.